Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. In this video I want to talk about fitting a voltmeter and USB port to your VFR. Um, in order to do that I'm going to be using a specially made bracket which will fit around the ignition lock. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here is just a couple of cheap, um, these are just cheap off of eBay, I think they're about four or five quid each, uh, they're not expensive, um, little voltmeter, little voltmeter there, that'll just screw together, and also a dual USB. So that uh, you know you can you can ride use uh, use sat nav have your your smartphone or whatever running a um, running a uh, navigation app um, and you don't have to worry about it running out of battery. So what I've uh, what I've got in conjunction with uh, a very nice chap on the VFR Owners Club uh, on Facebook by the name of Andy Drummond is. Um, this uh, this little bracket. Now this this bracket is uh, custom made to fit perfectly around the ignition uh, lock on the VFR 800 VTEC. Um, basically, it mounts into um, the uh, it, it mounts into the holes where the screws hold on the 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 hiss. Um, transponder um, receiver. So what we need to do is, in order to fit this is we need to remove the two screws that hold that hiss unit to the ignition barrel. And it's not as easy as you may think, um, but we'll, uh, we'll crack them off and uh, have a look at getting this bad boy fitted. Okay, so I have my voltmeter and my USB fitted to the bracket. They're tightened up nice and tight, no spinning in there. Basically where it's gonna fit is essentially like that. So as I think you can agree, that's gonna look pretty trick, quite cool. Um, obviously this is um, an alternative to doing things like drilling holes in the, in, the, in the body panels and stuff like that, which I've seen quite a lot. You know, it's everybody to themselves, but I just thought that that was pretty cool. And when I saw, the, uh, when I saw it, when the guy was uh, talking about it on the uh, owner's club, page I, I thought you know what I'm gonna get one of those and give it a bash okay so as I said a second ago um, the hiss system needs to be removed in order to fit it it basically sandwiches in between the top yoke and the uh, and the his uh, receiver and it uses the screws and um, they go through these two holes here to secure it in position now in order to get them off I would highly recommend the use of a JIS screwdriver um, these two screws are incredibly tight for obvious reasons. Um, this is part of the security system of the bike and they're made to be tight so that people don't, can't just come along and um, take them apart willy-nilly. So you, you know what I mean? You need, to, you need to use a good quality screwdriver. Don't try and use a Phillips on these. You'll round them off and they'll never come out. Okay then, in order to get to them, we need to go up underneath by the, uh, by the front mudguard. Okay then, so I've got my arm up underneath the mudguard and um, what I need, what I'm looking for is the screw head which is just here. I've just got the screwdriver on it right now. Okay, this is going to be incredibly tight. Right, now this side, believe it or not, is actually more difficult than that screw um, because you've got all the junk relating to the braking system also on this side which kind of gets in the way um, but there you go I've just managed to crack that one off and it's coming out quite nicely 
Now these screws aren't particularly long, they're not as long as you expect them to be. So that's one. Okay, now for the other side. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend trying to do this without a JAS screwdriver. If you, They're not expensive, you can pick them up on eBay fairly cheaply. Um, what you'll find though is in here, you've got all the brake hoses, brake lines, all that good stuff that just get in the way. So yeah, J, a JAS screwdriver is a must for this. <clears throat> there we go, there's the other one. She dropped out and there's the second one as you can see there is a thread locker on those so what i'll do is i'll put some more on when we uh, reassemble okay and there's the uh, there's the hiss unit removed simple as that right then so with the uh, with the hiss system out of the way we can see really well exactly where it's going to fit and right there just like so absolutely perfect machining these have been laser cut I'm led to believe and it couldn't be any more perfect so yeah I think you'll agree with the hiss system on top it looks like it's supposed to be there it looks like a really good looks a really good job okay now before I uh, before I go to the effort of screwing it down what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the uh, get the thing wired up um, what I've done is I've created a little loom we'll wire it up first because it'll be easier to get into the connections on the back of each of them each of these units um, before I screw it in right then so loom this is what I made um, basically all it is is um, allows the both of those modules to be wired in in parallel uh, like so um, the reason I've done it in parallel is because um, I believe um, that were there something uh, drawing power from the USB sockets, the voltage, uh, the voltmeter would would register that voltage drop and would obviously then underread. So I've done them in parallel, and in when I tested it, it seemed to work. So uh, obviously I'll be happily be corrected by anybody um, who knows more about electrics than I do. Um, if you uh, if you want to leave a comment, then uh, by all means do so. Um, at this point here, we've got three cables. Now these are for a rocker switch, and the reason we've got three is because obviously. One's the input, one's the output from the switch. But the third one is because the switch itself has a, a little LED indicator on it to say that it's on, um, and that needs its own ground. That's the reason why there's three. Up here, we've got a 10 amp fuse, just a 10 amp inline fuse. Um, the, USB, uh, the USB ports, one of them's uh, one amp and the other one's 2.1 amps. Um, so even if I was using them both, it's never gonna be um, to a point where it's gonna blow fuses or it shouldn't do. So the fuse should only blow if there's a fault. Uh, and the voltmeter itself probably draws somewhere in a region of milliamps. This end is um, a brand new connector. Now here we have the connector um, that used to go to the original regulator rectifier, but obviously it doesn't look as yellow as that one. And the reason for that is because I've replaced it with a brand spanking new one. All the terminals are new. All of these terminals are new. Um, all I've done is I've taken um, a live there and these these two grounds one grounds for the meters and the other ground is for the switch um, and it is simply a case of plugging her in like so now this is a permanent live it's it's live all the time regardless of whether the ignition's on hence the reason for the uh for the rocker switch okay let me put that up there for a second we'll come visit that in a, uh, in a moment first i want to talk about what i've done with the switch Okay then, switch. This is the switch I'm talking about. It's just a simple rocker switch with a weatherproof cap on it because um, obviously it's going to be open to the elements. Um, but as you can see in there, there's a little yellow LED light that will come on when it's uh, when it's when the switch is on. This panel here literally lives just there, like so. So as you can see, it's quite accessible. Just to, even with a gloved finger, you could get down in here to. Pop it on or off as required. Okay, and on the back, um, here's the three pins I was talking about. As you can see, I've just used a bit of glue in there just to keep it in place. Um, it's not particularly good looking, but 
it looks fine from that side. Um, yeah, there's the three pins. That's the ground um, for the light, and these are the positive and negative for the switch. Okay, so obviously that lives in there like so. What we need to do is connect it up. So actually, what I'll do is I'll reroute this ever so slightly. Bring it down the back of there. Connect her up. got orange in orange out and then the other ground plug all those in all of this cabling is just going to live behind this panel it'll be nicely nice and neatly tucked out of the way this one will come up towards the bars. And that will sit there just like so. Yeah, just like that. Right, now this one is going to come. Let's take that out of the way and take that off for a second. This one is going to come up under the yoke. just connect her up okay positive positive so that's the orange on each one both the orange wires and then the blue wires are the negative in my loom and there we go right let's put that down there now there's a bit of slack in the cable and there is a gap just underneath, just under here underneath the top yoke and I'm going to tuck that cable into that gap and then put his, his um, receiver over the top of it. So this is going to be a bit of, it's going to be a bit of juggling involved in this. So it's going to be just like that and then Obviously what I need to do is just get the, get the screws in from underneath. Now this is going to be fairly hard because I've got to try and line up the, the plate, the hiss module, and at the same time, keep all the cable in, in the right place. Let's get the bolt in through the, all right, the bolt's in through the yoke. Cable in there. Just like that. This is where I can do with about ten pairs of hands. Started. I'm not going to tighten that yet until I've got the side, until I've got the other side in. And this side's going to be a little bit more of a pain because I'm not left handed. Couldn't be any more left handed, or any less left handed, sorry, if I tried. Um, some people would say I'm ambidextrous because I can't do knuckle with either hand. But. both in so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this up as tight as I can get it. Uh, that's 
one. Just trying to navigate all the tables and houses. cable obviously I'm gonna tie wrap to the rest of the cables here once um, you know once I've got all the panels on and everything and everything's all adjusted where it wants to be I'll just uh, uh, yeah tie wrap that up out of the way but for now let's uh, give it a go okay there we go as you can see when I flick the when I flip the switch a little orange light comes on and 12.1 volts at the battery and then We've got power indicator on the uh, on the USB ports, so there we go. Obviously, if we put the key into the bike and fire her up, we should get charging voltage at the voltmeter. Let's check. Obviously the little orange uh, indicator along with that is quite bright so you shouldn't ever walk away from the bike with it um, with it left on. Uh, naturally if you wish you can always wire it into a switched a switch live like the headlight that you know you've got headlights here you can wire it into there if you wish uh, but I didn't want to I wanted to use the connector that I'd left um, left behind from the uh, previous reg rec so yeah I'm, uh, I'm perfectly happy with that so yeah, um, hopefully you found this, this video interesting uh, and useful. If you did, then like, subscribe, comment in, uh, in the comment section below and I'll, uh, I'll do what I can to get back to you. Um, if, you want to, uh, if you want to get one of these little plates yourself, um, it wasn't expensive. I can't remember the figure off the top of my head because I bought it a little, a little while ago just before I moved house. Um, but Andy Drummond is the name of the guy that you need to speak to and he can be found on the, uh, on the VFR Owners Club Facebook page. I will put a link to that page uh, in the description below so go and check that out get in there fire a message to Andy Drummond and um, I'm sure he'll be ha more than happy to help you out um, uh, with, with well with any any aspect to this uh, to this mod he uh, he manufactures the plates himself so yeah he'll uh, he's the guy to speak to anyway guys thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by thank you for watching up to this point and I will see you all again for the next video thank you very much bye bye now